In keeping with our Father's Day theme, I'm going to introduce you to an incredible father who is also an incredible man doing amazing things in the world. Retired Lieutenant Colonel Waldo Waldman is here with us today. He has gone from a very, very esteemed military career. Now he is out on stages around the world speaking to leadership and corporations about committing to excellence, preparing and adapting for change, building trusting relationships. He is the wingman of choice for all of us. And I love that he talks to us as wingmen and wingmams. And Waldo, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, it's great to be here. So we would love to hear a little bit of how you got to where you are today. I mean, why, why take such a fabulous career and then go out on stages, travel the world? It sounds all glamorous. I know it's a lot of work. <laughs> yeah, I think as, as you and Amy know, you know, everything in life uh, is a byproduct of, of your work, your relationships, your commitment and your goals. And, and for me, it was always about challenge. I, my dad was a mechanic at Kennedy Airport in New York City. I remember him coming home after a 16 hour day and grease on his uniform, smelling like jet fuel. And he finally put me in the cockpit when I was around 10 years old and uh, I got the bug. That was it, huh? <laughs> yep, I smelled the jet fuel. I, I saw the planes overhead and, and I, I'm like, dad, I want to fly them. But I had claustrophobia and a fear of heights. And so I had some challenges to overcome, but but uh, I, I made a commitment to, to eventually become a, a pilot. Uh, I, I went the military route. I love the military, the, the discipline, the teamwork, the, the, the constant challenge. And for me, that's been a very big recipe for my success because I thrive on challenge. And so after my experience as a fighter pilot in combat, I, I went to the business and sales world and then eventually became an entrepreneur doing what I do now, coaching uh, and, and, and speaking all over the world. But it was to me about doing something new and then creating creating something of my own that I can, that I could truly give my gift. And I love helping people. And it's been a great conduit of my energy to be able to be a speaker and a coach. So yeah, that's amazing. So question for you is, you know, claustrophobia and fear of heights, those are two major hurdles to being a fighter pilot, right? So what was it that made you want to do it and to even overcome those really severe challenges? So it's interesting because I always was afraid of heights. My twin brother would make fun of me when I was a kid. I never went off the diving boards mm -hmm. uh, uh, at the at the at the local community pools. I, I, the roller coasters, you know, Space Mountain, not for me. Right? It, really? It's kind of crazy. Wow. Yeah. And so, so uh, for me, it was about obviously facing my fears. Now, there's a little story behind this because at the Air Force Academy, in order for you to graduate, you have to jump off of a 33 feet high diving board, 10 meters. You don't jump, you don't graduate. Your chances of flying are kaput. And so, you know, I'm panicked. I'm like, I go to the instructor. I said, do you have to jump off this? He's like, you don't graduate unless you do. And so mm -hmm. last in my class, I finally took the leap. And as most of the things that we face that are fearful in our lives, it wasn't that bad. Mm -hmm. And I turned around, jumped off it again, turned around, jumped off it again. And got rid of my fear of heights, which I never did. Wow. But, and so it's a metaphor uh, for, for taking risks in life. You know, on the opposite side of that fear is where growth is. So by taking that leap of faith, by jumping, stepping out of your comfort zone, that's where success is. And for me, that's been something that's been foundational for me. Uh, I, I will always have a fear of heights, mm -hmm. but you've got to find something your passion, your dream, your goal, your relationship, something greater than that fear that elevates you and, 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 you know, you know, sublimates the fear and accentuates your energy and positivity for you to take that leap, whatever it is. And so I love that. And obviously there's so many, met that's a, a metaphor for so many things in life, right? Cause there's, yeah. you know, there's fear in everything, but I think that's, that's really amazing. And I love, you know, I love hearing your stories. I want to hear a couple of stories about when you were a pilot, because my dad was a pilot and he grew up, um, you know, as a flight instructor, he had a different career, but this was his real passion was he was doctor, and he one time got to go um, with the Blue Angels wow. in, in the cockpit. And that was his 
that was his just absolute apex of his, you know, love for flying. And he said that he did eight barrel rolls and then the the blue angels guy once they landed threw up and that was like the highlight of his whole life <laughs> so the pilot threw up the pilot threw up because he gave the controls to my dad and he did eight barrel rolls love it you know and anytime you can make fun of the navy is a good thing because i was after so good on your dad love it i love it that's amazing well so so when you um like what is something you know your book never fly solo i'm so excited to read it i've i've like read excerpts and things and i think it's going to be really awesome for for me to learn more on how to do some you know really important team building and build trust and build that culture in your organization but um what's a like a standout moment in your life where you you know really gain some of that in your experience as a pilot so look you know if you if you picture this jet right? Mm -hmm. This is an F-16. This is what I flew, you know, very tiny little cockpit, uh, barely able to move. Imagine being claustrophobic in that. And we could share that story later on how I developed claustrophobia. But uh, it was a challenge for me to, to fly that. But one of the things that were instrumental to my success, and it's part of my book and part of what I preach as a leadership speaker and as a father to my child and to my twin brother and to all my friends is that you're not flying solo. You may be strapped in by yourself, but you mm -hmm. have other men and women who are part of your formation, formally or informally, who help you to overcome success. But the key is you can't see the big picture of life when you're strapped into the cockpit. You can't see behind you. You can see out front and to the side, but guess where most of the threats and the life-changing experiences happen? At your blind spot where you don't see them. Let me see if I can have a, uh, have a, uh, a little imaging here. So, if you could check your six, your blind spot behind you, if somebody's standing or sitting in a cockpit next to you, they can look over their shoulder and see what's coming behind you. They can mm. see if you're leaking fuel or on fire or if the missile's coming mm. and they can see what you can't see on your own. So the concept of mutual support, the concept of having a wingman, a wingman to give you feedback, to tell you things that you may not want to hear, but mm -hmm. need to hear. And to support you and for you to support them, that is the whole concept of collaboration and trust, which is part of the Never Fly Solo Wingman philosophy. So obviously in combat, when missiles are coming and eight hour night combat missions are you know, part of your day, the trust you have in your team and the men and women you fly with is critical. And that check six environment of mutual support is key in business and key in life and has helped me grow. And I have a bunch of stories and I, I'd be happy to share them, but I want to give people the understanding that that's why we don't fly solo. They help you build the picture, deal with change. And guess what? You help them as well. And that's, that's the mutual support aspect of being a wingman. That's, that's, a, that's a, such a great analogy. So how did you develop claustrophobia? So, uh, I, I almost died in a scuba diving action. I'll make this very, very brief. And uh, uh, I was scuba diving in the Caribbean uh, three years into my 11 year flying career and uh, mask malfunction, had a panic attack. Worst experience of my life. No combat mission could come close to that day. And I, and I got out of the water, said, so I'm never doing that again. And just a few days later, I'm back in the cockpit flying a training mission and the weather was terrible. Mm. Couldn't see the sun, couldn't see the ground. It was called flying through mushroom soup. You know, you couldn't see anything other than, you know, the just the cockpit because you're in the clouds. And I basically had the same panic attack that I had a few days prior. But instead of being 35 feet under the water, I'm now 35,000 feet in the air. Oh, man. And I, I'm like, I got to get the heck out of this plane. I, I freaked out. Uh. And so for the next eight years of my flying career, almost 3000 hours of flight time. Every time I strapped into this tiny little cockpit, I had to deal with this, this PTSD that I got not from combat, but from scuba diving. Oh, and so, I mean, anybody who's watching this, who's claustrophobic, imagine being strapped into a tiny plane for eight hours at night over a rack getting shot at. Oh, it, it, it was intense. And so, I went through this transformation 
in my in my psyche, in my mindset, in my in my relationships, and how I viewed the world that helped me overcome my fear, gave more meaning to my mission, build that resilience that we all talk about these days, especially going through COVID. And it helped me maybe made me a better father. So I can look at my son who struggles with some things at school. He's a smart kid, but he, 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 he kind of gets a little bullied at times. He, he, he doesn't fit in because he's kind of nerdy. He loves sports, but he just loves science. And he hangs out with the, with the, with the nerds. Right. And, and so I'm teaching him how to be strong, be powerful in your uniqueness to face his fears. And I think my experience in overcoming that, as well as all the other things I've had, has, has built that credibility in me to be able to look at him and give him that encouragement to stay strong and to stay uh, stay in the jet and not quit on his dreams and whatever it is. You yeah. know, It is very much like being a parent, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And you have to tell the truth. You have to be willing to not be the best friend. You have to be willing to raise the child as opposed to being their friend through the entire experience. Yeah. And that is where we're going to ask you in honor of Father's Day, Waldo, could you share one event with us that is really meaningful for you as a dad or as a son? Well, I, I, you know, the, I, I'm 53. I got married in my early 40s. You know, I dodged the marriage missile as long as I could. And my wife from Orange County, by the way, Woodland Hills, she <laughs> shot me down. Beautiful, loving human being, Dana Wilson. If you know who she is, she's got some brothers in, in town there. Uh, uh, and so I, I met her in, uh, in Southern California, in San Diego, when I spoke at a conference there for Marriott, where she worked. But other than the birth of my son, the funnest, what I call spot weld moment was when I was asked to uh, go to Brave Stadium and I was the, the uh, military hero of the day during Father's Day. And uh, I was paraded around the field. Now, they normally don't allow the son or daughter to join in that pickup truck to go around the field because it's kind of dangerous. So I convinced him with my New York charm and charisma to allow my son Ace to, to spend that moment with me. And uh, we, we prayed around and we was on the big jumbotron. And, and it was just amazing to, to experience that with my son because he was only maybe maybe eight, eight at the time. This is two years ago. And it was just an amazing moment with my son. And uh, I know he was proud of me, but I was proud of him for for being there with me and and look there's nothing in my life other than my wife who brings more meaning to my mission uh than my son and so that was a great experience and he watched me throw out the first pitch the next year by the way which was another great experience so at the cool. point Race stadium wow. so, so you cool. are definitely the coolest dad in town we oh yeah you are yeah. Well, you at least are I'm, the coolest least from my dad. well at least to my son i i am and that's the most important and for our viewers who I know are going to want to find you and find out more and certainly find your book, where can they find you? Okay, a couple of ways. I'm going to show you a couple of things here. So if you go um, to, you know, if you Google Waldo Waldman or go to yourwingman.com, www.yourwingman.com, I have some of the information there. I'm all over social media uh, at Waldo Waldman. But if you want to get, I'm going to give everybody the chance to download my audio book, the New York Times bestseller. It's 20 bucks on Audible. If you go to yourwingman.com forward slash NFS, like Never Fly Solo, you can download the audio book there. Share it with your kids, your sons and daughters, if you're a wing mom or wing dad. Um, and then my LinkedIn profile is right there. That's a QR code. You can screenshot that. And uh, that's how you can find me on LinkedIn because I do a lot of posts there. But that's, uh, that's it in a nutshell amazing Perfect. thank you so much waldo we're so grateful that you came to share with us and it is always a pleasure to see you it was wonderful to spend a few minutes with you both and thank you for allowing me the opportunity to share a little of my story absolutely loved it thank you so much you're welcome we'll look forward to seeing you again Bye.